Today on Hands-On Photography, I am going to walk you through the process of retouching from a professional standpoint. Yeah, I've shown you on how to do some photo editing in Lightroom and Photoshop and things like that, but I haven't shown you everything. I haven't shown you from the professional's perspective as far as doing a, a portrait and going through that retouching process. We've talked about frequency separation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's more to it. And I'm going to take you through that process so you can start doing this for yourself and people are going to keep coming back to you for your wonderful work. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Blue Land. Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastics by reinventing home essentials that are good for you and the planet. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash hop. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hey, I hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always, each and every Thursday. I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And today, that's exactly what we're going to do is get into a bit of post processing or a bit of uh, the approach of a professional photographer, a professional retoucher uh, going into the post processing aspect. But before we get into that, I want to say welcome to everybody that's catching the show for the very first time. Welcome to you. Go ahead and subscribe right now on whatever podcast application you're using, whether it's Spotify, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Google's podcasts app whatever they're using at the moment until they kill it or our youtube channel but if you have any issues just finding the general subscription options just head on over to the website twit.tv slash hop that's twit.tv slash h-o-p for hands-on photography and you see all the subscription options there as well as all of our previous episodes and previous show notes i try to throw a couple different nuggets in those show notes so go back and check those out and uh, check out those previous episodes. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started with this week's episode. Now, I I know I wanted to talk about getting into the retouching like a pro, if you will, but before we do that, I wanted to take a look at a bit of a news story that's released uh, here recently from the folks over at Engadget, and the headline says, Nikon is reportedly halting DSLR camera development. <laughs> Well, surprise, surprise. Somebody else is saying, you know what? We're done with DSLRs. Okay, so way back in January of this year, I I, I can't remember the episode number. Uh, I think it was, eh, doesn't matter. I think it was like episode 140 or something. Nope, it was 112. Wow, it's way back. <laughs> episode 112. I talked about Canon, you know, because I'm a Canon fanboy. Well known. Um they said, you know what? We're done with doing DSLRs. We're just going to move ahead with the mirrorless side of things and uh, put all of our, our eggs in that basket and just continue to create uh, and produce mirrorless cameras. Well, Nikon has decided to do the same thing. And you know what? Why the heck not? That's the nature of this business right now. That is the new technology, the mirrorless side. Um, DSLRs are just old tech. Mirrorless is clearly the the winner right now. I was just speaking to Mr. Rod Pyle here recently um, because he was looking at trying to find a new camera just to goof off with. Uh, Rod Pyle hosts our show this week in space. That's twit.tv slash T-W-I-S. Be sure to check him out each and every Friday. Anyway, this isn't about him. This is about <laughs> him wanting to get another another camera. And, you know, so he's got some options out there. He can go and look at some of the inexpensive mirrorless bodies that we've talked about before with Miss Vanessa Joy and the budget friendly photography side of things or you can go back and just jump into the old dslrs and some people are thinking well if the dslr technology is is dead why would i buy an old dslr well number one because you can get them ridiculously cheap now you you, you can and the support on them yeah the support is probably going to die out but really just how much how often are you going to use that camera if you're going to consider just spending you know a couple hundred bucks if it's something that you're wanting to use very often then yeah 
get yourself a mirrorless body. But if it's something that you just need to set up as a quick webcam, if you will, to make it look better on your Zoom calls or, or Google Hangouts or whatever, I would totally buy these old DSLRs. Nikon has made some nice ones over the years, as well as Canon and Sony. Yeah, but well, maybe not Sony, but well as Canon. <laughs> I would I would definitely jump into the old school DSLR market DSLR market just for, you know, certain purposes, if you will, not necessarily as my daily driver. No, no. Maybe something as a starter camera for a youngster that's just wanting to get used to, you know, handling the, the camera controls and understanding the exposure triangle. Yeah. Why not? I, I think that's a nice option. But. I just wanted to share this story from the folks hitting gadget because I thought it was noteworthy that Nikon is saying, you know what? Yep, we're moving on because they have some pretty great mirrorless bodies out there. They have the Z6 and the Z7, and they did release the Z9 here not too long ago. I was able to go check that out. I didn't really get to have my hands on it to shoot with it for an extended amount of time because I don't have those connections at Nikon just yet like I do with Canon. One of these days, maybe I'll, I don't know. I'll see if I can get one from lens rentals or something and try it out. But the Z9 is a really, really nice camera. That's their flagship mirrorless body for the professional photographer. It's got a lot of bells and whistles from 8K video shooting and uh, extra, uh, a, a whole lot of megapixels for your stills and really, really fast shutter speeds. All of that good stuff that the professionals are needing at a, somewhat premium price. It's not as expensive as the Canon or the uh, current uh, Sony offerings. So it's it's a nice worthy competitor and worth taking a look. I talked about it briefly on our um, Tech Break feed. You can check that out. Mr. Victor will pull that up here and uh, I'll put it in the show notes as well. But anyway, that's it. I just wanted to touch on that for a few minutes. Uh, do you even think about buying yourself a, a an old camera just for kicks and you know, again, I don't see anything wrong with that it's just because of the purposes that you can get out of it. And it's not necessarily a break the bank investment, if you will. Let me know your thoughts. Shoot me a message over on uh, Twitter. I'm Ant underscore Pruitt over there. All right, moving on. Next segment, I wanted to get into the, the, re the retouching uh, images like a pro. Here recently, I had the honor and the pleasure to be able to shoot some images of the Laporte family um, because they, they were being featured in a particular magazine. I don't remember what it was, but it doesn't matter. But I was honored that they asked me to take the photos for them to be used and, um, and they were quite pleased with them. I'm so happy about that. But as I was shooting that, I was thinking about my approach as um, far as getting the shot set up, number one, and snapping it, and then my post-processing uh, procedures before I even presented it to the Laporte family to be used. And there's going to be a lot of different thoughts and opinions on this particular process, but that's fine because it's still an art. You're not going to process an image the same way I would, but what I'm hoping you would do is, is be able to go into the approach of post-processing and looking at things that a professional photographer will look at far as doing the retouching and things of that nature. So let me hop on over into uh, Lightroom and we'll pull up this image and we'll just uh, walk through the process. So let me switch my screen. There it is. All right, so there's two images. This is the original shot here and this is the process shot. And there's some subtle differences there. I'm not gonna keep them on the screen very long. I just wanna see if you can catch them, but there's a couple subtle differences there. So let's walk through the initial um, processing on this, getting the exposure right and things like that. Now, in Lightroom, you have these uh, different camera profiles that you can select. Of course, I was using my Canon, but it also allows me to take in effect the, uh, the lens that I shot this on. I shot this on my 85 millimeter. That's my favorite lens to shoot with when it comes to doing portraiture because of the, the compression in the background and just, oh, it just makes people look great. They don't have all of these weird um, shape heads and things like that when you use a wide angle uh, lens. But yeah, I was using my 85 and that way it knows to make sure this lens, this image is going to be displayed properly and not all distorted and stuff. So got that squared away and we hop on up to the top and let's start looking at our general exposure. Okay. First things first, 
Now I use my, one of my studio lights. I brought one of my studio lights in to do this shoot, even though we are in the Twit studios with all of these lightings, lighting kits and whatnot. I wanted to use my lights because I, I, I have more control, if you will. So what I did is I turned off the house lights and made sure the set in the background was lit up for, for the Twit D table set there. And then I just brought in my Stella Pro light to key them, if you will. And then I had to take a look at the white balance. And because I've been shooting with Canon for a very long time, I know that Canon's white balance tends to favor on the warm side of things. And yes, my light was set to 5600K, which is standard daylight. But even that 5600K is not as warm as Canon likes to pull it out um, when you pull up the raw files. So I've already known, I already know in the back of my head, okay, I'm going to have to cool this image off even before I even see it on the computer. So let's go ahead and look at the white balance now and just take a look at the color temperature and let's cool it off a touch. So now this is looking way more natural. Look at their skin. This is looking way more natural now versus what it would normally look like under the uh, regular quote unquote white balance offered from Canon. So we cooled it off a little bit and now let's just fix the exposure because it's a little bit overexposed just slightly. So we'll pull the exposure slider back. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Next, we're going to pull up the shadows to give it a little bit more fill. Looking good. And then I like to take the white level and push it up just a touch because he's wearing a white shirt. So I want to push it up just a touch, not too much. And then I'm going to take the highlights and pull the highlights back because what's going to happen is the highlights on his face and the highlights on Mrs. Laporte's face tend to get blown out from the, uh, the key light being a little too harsh um, at times. So I always pull it all the way back just to be safe. And if you're looking at this now, that's pulled back a bit too much. So let's just, just put a little bit more back in there. Okay. Just a little bit more. That's better. So now their faces don't look terribly harsh with the highlights on them. And for the most part, this looks fairly good. I can play around with clarity and texture, give it a little bit more vibrance in the color. And you see, you have this vibrance here and you have this saturation slider here on the screen and both of those affect color, but it's a different level of color being affected with those sliders. Let me reset this vibrance one here. Okay. So if I wanted to change the saturation, that's going to affect all of the colors in this thing, not necessarily um, one in particular, or anything like that. It's just going to boost the color levels of everything, the fill. And as I push it up, it looks really, really nasty. A lot of times I hardly ever touch the saturation because my camera's uh, saturation is usually pretty good. Vibrance, on the other hand, that's looking more at the mid-tones, the mid-tone range of the uh, histogram and looking at the colors there. So I'm going to push it up and what should happen is it's going to really make sure their skin is looking nice and alive, letting you know that there's some blood under that skin, not just the, you know, quietly weird dead, dead person standing there in front of me. Okay. All right. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. Let's push the exposure up just a little more like so and cool it off just a touch more. There we go. I think this looks pretty good, right? What do you think? But that's just the initial process and the initial uh, touch up, if you will. But there's still some things that I see are not quite right with this image that I think could be better. And that's something that we're going to address. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and take a few minutes and let you folks know all about this week's sponsor of this week's show. And that's those folks over at Blue Land. Did you know that an estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year? And if that's not bad enough, most cleaning formulas are 90% water, which is pretty heavy to ship, leading to excessive carbon emissions. Plus, those products are often filled with nasty ingredients like chlorine and ammonia. Good grief. That's a lose-lose situation for you, for me, and the planet. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the number of plastic bottles and containers you throw away? Ever thought about purchasing more eco-friendly products, but didn't know where to start? 
Or maybe you've tried a few green products, quote unquote, but found them pricey or ineffective. If you answered yes to any of these questions, let me tell you all about the folks Blue Land. Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single use plastics by reinventing some home essentials that are good for you and the planet. Blue Land's innovative tablet refill solution takes up 10 times less space than a traditional bottle and their powerful formulas keep your home clean and smelling amazing. The idea is simple. Grab one of the beautiful forever bottles, fill it with warm water, drop in the tablet and get cleaning. Refills start at just two bucks and you don't have to buy a new plastic bottle every time you run out. You can even set up a subscription if you feel like that's what you need to do. That way <laughs> you don't ever run out of the products that you use the most and you save even more when you buy in bulk. From cleaning sprays to hand soap to toilet cleaner and laundry tablets, all Blue Land products are made with ingredients you can feel good about. I've been using their toilet cleaner tablets because it's just so daggum simple and effective. You literally just drop it in the bowl and it fizzes up and it smells all good and you just wash it around with the little brush and you're good to go. Done. Effective. Try their clean essentials kit, which has everything you need to get started. Blue Land products come in refreshing signature scents like iris agave, fresh lemon and eucalyptus mint and for a limited time their hand soap is getting a bit of a summer upgrade with these three refreshing new scents you got strawberry rhubarb you got citrus patchouli and you have coconut palm i think that's how you say citrus patchouli it sounds fancy and clean <laughs> right now you can get 15 percent off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash hop that's 15% off your first order of any Blue Land products at blueland.com slash hop. One more time, that's blueland.com slash hop. And we thank Blue Land for supporting hands-on photography. All right, so now we, we just did a bit of retouching here inside of Lightroom. The next step is to take that image for me anyway, is to take that image into Photoshop because there's a couple of different things that I noticed in, in, in this particular frame. So let me switch my screen and show you uh, Photoshop here. So, let, all right, so we're now inside of Photoshop. And again, this is a nice looking image, um, but there's still some things that I don't necessarily care for. Okay, so let's take a look at the scene in general. And I know this is a different type of show, but I remember thinking back when I first started the show, Mr. Laporte said, I would love to have like a Bob Ross moment if you just going through and editing photos. Well, Mr. Laporte, today is that day. <laughs> We're gonna have a bit of Bob Ross time, if you will, going through this image. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my trusty Wacom tablet here. Let's see here, got it. And we're gonna dive into this. Okay, so again, I'm looking at this shot. There's a couple of things in the scene that I don't necessarily care for. So if I hover my mouse right here, you see you have this set light here, you have this set light here, and the set light here, and this looks like a PTZ camera. Then I'm not sure what this is over here in the upper left. This looks like a cable of some sort. And granted, when I composed this, this shot, I did see all of that but I didn't stress too much about it because I knew there were some things I could do inside of Photoshop to alleviate those image, those um, distractions being in the shot. If, if you can avoid doing that and just getting it right in camera, getting it right, right there on the set, do that first. But I know I couldn't go back in there and move those different lights around on the set. I knew that. So, all right, anyway. So let's get rid of those. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and make this a non-destructive process here. So let's go ahead and duplicate our layer. So we have a nice backup there. And we'll go in here and let's uh, start cleaning up these, these lights. And Photoshop has some tools built in, just like um, Affinity Photo has, where you can just clearly remove things from the scene. So I'm going to circle, whoops, I don't want to do it that way. I wanted to circle. So I'm going to circle this little area here, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, make it a little easier for you all to see. Okay, so I circled that corner, okay. Next, we will do edit, content aware fill, 
it's going to open up its new tool, just taking AI into effect. And it pretty much removed it there. Great. And I can tell it to keep it on the same layer. Boom. Apply. Okay. There. Done. It took away that light or whatever that was. Now, granted, it left this other stuff here. I don't know what that is. It looks like another little cable or something. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that too, just by using our spot healing brush. So let's uh, make our brush head a little bit larger and we'll just brush it away. And sometimes the AI is like, eh, we can do a little bit better if you do this one more time there. So we brush that away. Now this is where the fun is going to begin because we got a lot to work with when you start looking at this particular studio light here and that PTZ. Uh, Cause if I remove that, what's behind it is these, this um, twit sign here. And thing is, I don't even know if the AI will be able to handle all of that. Um, and figure out, huh, let's try to recreate this sign. So what I do is take a bit of a piece by piece effect um, approach to this. So let's um, take our clone stamp. I hit an S on the keyboard and we'll just start to paint this away slowly but surely. So I'll hit Alt on my keyboard to take a sample like so. And then I'll make my brush a little bit larger and we'll just brush it away. Take another sample and we'll just start brushing away part of this here. So just paint it in a little bit at a time. And then I get to some point where I can do a, you know, bigger chunks, if you will, and try to use those AI tools like so. And when I'm looking at this, I don't necessarily have to worry too much about the detail because this is in the background. You know, when I'm looking at it from this perspective, I'm zoomed in pretty tight. Okay. But we're not going to be zoomed in. <laughs> this is what it would normally look like. Right. So you can't really see too much detail. If anything, maybe I'll blur it some, but for the most part, this is right on pace where I need to be. So I'm going to zoom in some more. And now I'll see if I can start to do a little bit more with the AI side of things. Like I could try with this patch tool or something. So go over here, select the patch tool like that. Stuff like this. And let's get in there. And this is a can be a pretty tedious process, but hang in there. It'll be worth it in the end. Okay, so we got that. Now let's see if I can do let the content aware fill like we did a second ago. Does it fill it in? Yeah, looks like it did. Not bad, right? And I can take that and, you know, maybe potentially blur it if I need to, but I think that'll do for now. It filled it in. And now let's start working on this camera. Let's circle that. And let's try the patch tool. How will that look? Not bad. It's going away. So I'm going to switch back to my healing brush and just sort of brush that away like that. Not bad. Go back to the patch tool and we'll just keep trying to do it a little piece at a time. And just enjoy the process of going through this tedious, tedious step. <laughs> Swipe it off like that. Not bad. Not bad. I may have grabbed too big of a chunk right there, but let's see. Nope, that works. Let's 
to try this. And again, you're looking at it and you're thinking, boy, that looks like a mess, but it's okay. It's back there in the background. It's blurred out. We just see it at a pixel peeping level. We're really zoomed in tight. Okay, so now this is gonna get tricky because as I zoom in on this, we're dealing with not only the background having the this twit symbol back here, twit sign back here, but then there's the wall on the other side of it. So we need to take into effect that, okay, part of it is gonna be replaced with the sign and the other part's gonna be replaced with um, the wall. So what I can try to do is just heal it this way. See how that comes out. And it's trial and error. It may not look so good. And yeah, it looks okay. So let's zoom out. Yeah, that's okay for there. For now. This I'm really doing a rough job on this, so I don't take two hours to do this particular episode of the show. So now let's go over here and fill this in. That okay. Looking good. Easy stuff. Just filling in the background. Looking good. Looking good. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, so let's zoom out. You know what? I can work with that. All right? So let's control D. And so now I will, I don't know, I'll just add a little blur to it. So let's grab my lasso tool by pressing L on the keyboard. And I'm going to select this particular section right here. Now we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And if I turn it all the way off, you can see what it looks like now on the screen. But as I start to introduce the blur, you'll notice it starts to soften it just a little more. See? And it's starting to fit the background a little bit more uniformly. Something like that's good, right? Yeah, I think so. Next thing, this light here, this, this light just behind his head, I don't have a problem with the light for the most part. What I have a problem with is the way the fixture is just designed. Uh, I don't like this whole whatever this little thing is that's um, sort of sticking out <laughs> on the side. It's so weird. So let's see if I go back to the lasso tool. Oh, did my keyboard get stuck? There we go. Lasso tool. And just circle that edge. Like so, switch to the patch tool and let's see if we can patch it. How's that look? Yeah, that looks better to me. And then again, I'll switch back to my healing brush and just brush away the little artifact right there. Okay. All right. This is looking good, folks. Can heal this up a little bit. Heal that up. Tiny little spots that are showing. Don't really need them there. Okay. And now lastly, we have this little weird cable or whatever this is showing in the upper left corner. I should just be able to zoom in tight and just brush it away as well. So let's see if that'll work with our healing brush. Survey says, no, it did not. So let's try it in a couple strokes. Let's get in there. Get in there. Or I could have just done a content aware fill. Got options. You got options. There we go. And again, I'm going to continue to preach. Get yourself a Wacom tablet. Having a stylus to do this stuff is so much easier than using a mouse. Because you can get way more precise when it comes to, you know, doing your strokes, your brush strokes and stuff. So 
All right, so this looks pretty good. Let me zoom out. That's great. I'm totally fine with that. All right, now let's take a look at the heroes of the shot, our, our models here. Now we've talked about frequency separation a couple of weeks ago, and this could definitely use some frequency separation to help soften up certain spots of their skin. And I'm not gonna do a full frequency separation because that takes time, but I will just do a, a little quick pass here. It was just over a couple of things that I noticed. All right, so let's go ahead and say duplicate this layer twice. Okay. And we will rename this one layer as our low frequency. We'll rename this top layer as our high frequency. And I will put these in a group like so. All right, so they're in a group. And I can add this layer to that group too. It doesn't really matter now that I think about it, but it's there. All right, so let's do low frequency. Turn off our higher frequency and let's just focus on the low frequency and blur it out to all get out. Okay, so filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we don't wanna to go too much, okay? Because we don't want them to have plastic skin. We want them to have softer skin. And I think think about nine, somewhere between nine and 10 pixels should work. So we got that, click okay. And then we'll go back to our high layer and we'll go to image. And we will select apply image. For the layer, we're gonna change that to low. And then from blending, we wanna change that to subtract. Okay, click okay. And now we have this weird gray screen. We need to change the blending mode to linear light. All right, so now this is where the fun begins. We'll zoom in and we'll play around with their skin. And in particular, we'll take a look at Mr. Laporte's skin. And remember we talked about getting our mixing brush. So we'll go over to the brush tool and select the mixing brush. Click on our low layer. And let's just get in a little closer on his face here. I'll make this brush a touch bigger. And we're up here in the upper left, we want, we want this to be a clean brush and transparent, okay? We don't want it to have a color up there. So I'm just gonna lightly brush along his cheeks and make sure I'm going along the natural lines of his face. So just lightly brush that in like so. Take a look at his forehead here. Zoom in a little more. Okay. Brush is too big. And again, we want a clean brush. Just brush it. Just soften it up some across the skin. Looking good. Looking good. Get his chin. Very good. Okay, so let's zoom out. And let's do the same for Mrs. Laporte. So I will move in, take a look at her. Okay. I mean, not that our skin looks bad, our skin looks great, but we can always do some subtle retouching, just subtle, like so. Like that. Okay, zoom out. Now, again, this was very, very subtle retouching there, okay? So if I do a little before and after, so I'm gonna turn it off. That's before, and that's with the lights and all of that stuff in the background, and look at her faces, and then this is the after. Much nicer, right? And it's subtle. It's not something that's like totally obviously Photoshop. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm just gonna stop right there from a skin retouching things. Now, there's still some, some other things that I'd like to handle here. So I'm gonna take this group and we're gonna merge this group. OK, 
Okay. So let's say merge group like so. All right. Not done because still some things that's really nitpicking me here. Look at her hair. All right. So we have Mrs. Laporte's hair looks totally fine. And prior to the shoot, when she was facing the camera, there was a couple of times I had to say, hey, Miss Lisa, take your hair, pull it back around your shoulders. You have to notice stuff like that. We don't want her hair all over the place. We don't want her hair flying all over her shoulders, flying all over, all over her face, anything like that. Take two seconds to say, hi, let's, let's uh, fix your hair just for a second. So brush your hair back. You don't have to do it. Have the model do it, you know, cause it's, we don't want you touching the models without their consent and stuff like that. So she brushed her hair back and it's fine. Now we look at his hair and this isn't something that, you know, that he necessarily did. It's just the nature of his hair and this kind of stuff happens. And it's these wispies. See that? You probably didn't see it, but I see them and it drives me nuts every time, <laughs> every time I do portraits. But that's the nature of this, this business. That's the nature of this profession is you have to notice the fine details like this. So I'm going to, let me duplicate this layer again, just to be safe. So I have a clean copy I'm going to get rid of those little wispies. So we'll just do a healing brush J on the keyboard and we can brush them away to get rid of them. See, and you'll have to use multiple strokes. And sometimes you may even have to use multiple tools. Okay. So yeah, I've gotten rid of them, but it doesn't necessarily look clean. So let's just switch the tool to the patch tool. Grab that patch that we just did all of that brushing on. And let's make it blend in a little better by looking like the rest of that light fixture like that. Okay. So I'll go back to the healing brush. I'm going to zoom in some more. Cause I see this little tiny detail that needs to be addressed. That looks better. Wispy hair is gone. Easy as that. Get rid of the wispy hair. And again, there are going to be some instances where you won't notice it as much. Um, depending on like the depth of field that you shot with. I don't believe I shot this at a super shallow depth of field. It's probably along the lines of F4. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Most of the time I start out at about F8, so I don't have a shallow depth of field. Because F8 is just when the lenses are really, really sharp in my experience. There. There. So, got rid of the wispy hair. So let's zoom out. Much better, right? And then you can take a few minutes to do a little bit of spot healing on their on their faces, like if they have little blemishes, like he's got this little little bump that shows up right here. Let's get rid of that. It's gone. Another one there. Another one here. Gone. And he's got the line, you know, the line that goes across the top of his forehead. Those are natural, but sometimes I think they take away. So every now and then I'll take a look and just say, oh, let's get rid of that. You know, let's get rid of that. Because he still has his eyebrows. It still gives us the expression. These lines don't really add to that, in my opinion. There. And we'll do the same for Miss Lisa. We'll just take a look, you know, see, we see this little blemish here next to her ear. And I'm just going to brush it away like that. It's got another little bump there. Then there's this light spot. So let's get rid of that. There we go. Again, this is all quick stuff. I should spend way more time on this image. And in the original image that I shot, yes, I did. But for the podcast, 
This is a quick and dirty retouching. Like so. There. Now, I think this looks so much better. You know, we got our models looking absolutely beautiful as they always do. And then we have the background with the Twit logo being captured. Not a bunch of distractions coming from studio lights and things like that. This is looking so much better. But there is one more thing. Mm, let me take a look here. All right. So if you're looking at this image, I see the both of them and she's got her hand on, on, on his chest and shoulders. And she's got this really, really nice looking ring here. And then there's something going on right here on the screen on her with, with her hand on her chest, on his chest. I'm like, what the heck is that? Is that a bandage? <laughs> so I zoom in on it. And as I look at this, it almost looks like a band aid. Well, let me go ahead and tell you, it is not a band aid. That's just happened to be how the light <laughs> captured uh, the, this ring that's on her finger. And the way the shadows hit it, it, it hit it just perfectly to where it, it ended up looking like a bandage to me. She confirmed that it is not a bandage after I removed it. <laughs> but I'm looking at this right now. It looks like a bandage because of the way it matches up with their skin tone and stuff like that. It doesn't really look like a ring to me. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. It just doesn't look right. So we'll do S on the keyboard. Hit Alt to get a sample. And we're just going to gently brush this away. Hold on. I did that wrong. Alt here. I'll just start brushing it away. And then you should be able to do a fill like this. Okay. So now let's try to do a, like a patch. So I'll go J on my keyboard, switch to the patch tool. And just start taking it away slowly. There we go. Much better, in my opinion. And see right there, it does sort of look like a ring because it's a little shine there. But all I could see was a bandage. <laughs> and see, that looks weird right now. So the next thing we need to do is to make this look more like the rest of her skin. So we'll go back to that cloning, cloning tool. So we hit S on the keyboard. S on the keyboard. Oh, my keyboard got stuck again. Trying it again. So now. S on the keyboard, <laughs> and then Alt, and we'll just start to paint it in. So it just starts to look more like her skin there. Have some skin texture, you know. It's a little rough, but it's okay for now. Something like that. It's getting better. One more thing. There we go. All right. I'm not going to spend more time on it because I'm going to zoom out and it's going to look like her hand there and not a band-aid. <laughs> Mr. Laporte, I know you probably got that ring for, her, um, but yeah, man, or maybe she got, got it herself, but either way, when I saw it on the screen, it looked like a daggum band-aid. Wasn't too thrilled about that. So I had to get rid of it. And I think that looks way better and it looks natural. Okay. So next we're going to finish it up. We'll just hit save to bring this back into Lightroom. 
So let me <clears throat> do an alt tab and hop on over in the Lightroom. Screen is going to refresh. There we go. And this is pretty much ready to go, folks. So I will throw a little vignette on it here. Like so, not too much, you know, if you overdo it, then it looks like Olin Mills or something. We don't want that. A little vignette like that. And I'm going to bring the exposure up one more time. Right about, whoops, that's too far in. Here we go. There, we are done. That is our image. So if we take a look here in Lightroom, we can go to the first one, which was this one. <laughs> Actually, that's not even how it started. It started out like that. Okay. So that's the before. And then this is the after. Much better, right? I think so. All right. Well, folks, that is it. That is the process of, you know, retouching as a professional would retouch. There's a lot of things with, from a detail standpoint and a nuance that you have to consider when you're retouching shots for people that are paying you to do this work. Um, again, think about the likes of Miss uh, Lisa Carney, who's been on the show before. She's a photo finisher. And these are the types of things that she's looking at as she's finishing photographs, whether it be portraits like this or whether it be for a movie uh, piece of art, uh, uh, like a movie trailer's artwork. She has to look at all of those fine details to make sure it's going to work out perfectly for the client. And even if it comes down to looking at the wrinkles in the shirt, you need to fix that. If you can't fix it on the set, you're going to have to fix it in post. If it's going to be little threads hanging off of the shirt, you're going to have to fix that in post if you're not fixing it on the set. It's fine details. All of that goes a very, very long way. And that is why people will continue to hire you because you pay attention to stuff like that. Okay. So Keep that in mind when you're doing your retouching, whether it's uh, retouching photos of people or just uh, retouching objects. It could be products, things like that. Uh, it, landscape. You notice things in a landscape scene that just don't quite look right. Fix it. Fix it. Find little details and people will notice it and they'll keep coming back to you for your work. All right. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for the continued support and checking us out each and every week. Again, Tell somebody else about the show. Tell your favorite friend. Tell your favorite enemy, because I'm sure you got one. <laughs> we all have a hater. So tell your favorite friend. Tell one enemy about hands-on photography. Check us out on the website, twit.tv slash hop. It's twit.tv slash H-O-P. Let them know that we're trying to help make people better photographers and better post-processors and help build the hands-on photography community. I want to give a shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week and dealing with crazy little episodes like this one. That's going to be quite challenging from the editing standpoint. Thank you, my man. I really do appreciate your efforts. Hey, folks, give me a follow on social media. Go follow me over on Instagram and, and Twitter. And heck, I think, yeah, I even use TikTok every now and then. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I still use it. So. Give me a follow over on uh, Instagram. I am ant underscore Pruitt there. And I'm also ant underscore Pruitt over on TikTok. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is ant underscore Pruitt on TikTok. And the same on Twitter. My dogs decided to start barking right now. So I guess it's time for me to close this show out. Hey, <laughs> safely create and dominate. And I can't wait to hear from you about this episode. And I will see you next time. Y'all take care. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.